All right, so Ken, you're telling me you have the same container running in Lambda and Kubernetes with getting secrets without changing the image, right? That's right, yeah. So like uh, the idea is, is that you have uh, a good part of your organization or your process where you have Kubernetes images running and you maybe want to start experiment with sort of event-driven architectures or maybe cheaper compute for background jobs or things like that. So how can you take these Kubernetes images and run them in AWS Lambda? And the critical part here, how do you not change any of the code so that it just works to do that? Well, yeah, because that was always the sticky point, right? Like, because I have my app, I can deploy it to Kubernetes and I can repackage it and change it to then go over to Lambda, make it event driven. Um, but also mm -hmm. like the apps don't function by themselves. They need other things. And secrets is one of those big things. And so with, with Cryptea, you can pull in secrets from Parameter Store without rewriting the app or, or locking it into one or the other, right? Yeah, and you don't even have to think about like uh, how you're, Lambda handler works, right? You just load your app up into memory. You don't have to think about code outside of a handler that has to go out and fetch all these things. And uh, it, it just basically works. And I think that's what engineers expect, right? They don't want to, they don't want to have to retool containers for one platform or another. They just want to deploy containers. And that sounds like too much magic. So you're gonna have to show me how it works. All right. So let's imagine here on the left hand side, I'm running uh, an express app. And this is just a basic express app. And on the right hand side, I'm showing an app.js file. So it's very vanilla. It's boilerplate uh, Express and JavaScript. Uh, the only thing that's not normal about this is I'm showing you my secrets. So don't do that. <laughs> Hopefully that's not normal. Hopefully you yeah. aren't doing that. <laughs> that is not normal. So these are the secrets. So I put two of them in place here. And there's a, like a, a fake uh, database URL and just some other key that which just happens to be a string. And you can see here on the left-hand side that you know we're using MySQL. We have a super secure user and password. And of course, the uh, with Kubernetes, we're probably running on a local host as well. But these are the secrets. This is the make-believe app that you might have running on Kubernetes. And this is the one that we can get to Lambda. So how does Cryptea do that? Well, so first of all, it's going to, let's take a look a little bit about uh, uh, what we've got going on here, right? So here's the image like an ECR. So just imagine this is a, an image in ECR. We've got it running at this, you know, this is my account, uh, some K8s uh, uh, repository. And that, that's just there. So this is the Kubernetes image. It's just sitting there, uh, has nothing to do with Lambda. We already covered this before. These are my secrets. So these are in SSM now. Secrets can possibly be in different places, maybe DynamoDB. Uh, and these are the ones that typically Kubernetes would be pulling in through something called the external secrets operator. Uh, which basically helps you just get these environment variables in there. So with uh, Cryptea, uh, the goal is to, how do we get that in there? So let me give you a little high level overview. This is the, the GitHub project. Uh, it's uh, open source under the Rails Lambda, uh, but it doesn't have to be used for Rails. It works for any Docker container. It also works for pretty much any programming language, Node, Ruby, PHP, Python, et cetera. And it's doing that because it can hack into this really cool thing called LD preload. I don't know. You ever done any preload stuff, Justin? Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's a lot of question on how this works. So I made a little sequence diagram. So like a good engineer, sequence diagrams are a friend. Uh, but this is basically how it works, right? Cryptea is two parts. There's the initial binary that's launched as part of the entry point of your application. And then there's a LD preload shared object. So uh, we start off with some sort of containerized workload. We have an entry point that hits the... Uh, the Cryptea bin file. This bin file will basically go out to uh, SSM and read your secrets. Uh, it'll look at your environments that you have configured and it will go find the stuff that it needs to. So think of this as the external secrets operator for Kubernetes. It goes and gets the secrets and it writes them to a file. When your workload starts up, you typically have a command like the, the process that's running. And that's where we use LD preload. So LD preload will look at... Uh, so before any of your binary start, we'll LD preload another shared object file. This shared object file is smart enough to read the Cryptea encrypted secrets that were temporarily written to disk. It'll remove them. It'll put them into some shared memory with your application. And then by the time your application just does normal things like, hey, give me this environment variable, they're there, they're ready to use, they're not making API calls, they're super fast, they're locked down in secure memory, and they're just gonna sit there and just return what you would pretty much how external secrets operator works.
Yeah, I mean, that's such a clever way of doing it because you're right, like external secrets operator in Kubernetes, we can set up the environments and set up files on disk before the process runs because Kubernetes owns the container and the pod as it's spinning up. LD preload is, is like that on a Linux system where LD preload is setting up all your shared libraries and your environment before a process executes, not a pod in Kubernetes. And so by controlling the process before Lambda or before Kubernetes, you can say, hey, do we need secrets? Yes, let me go fetch those and I will put them in your memory uh, for you to just use. And that's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. And and this little program is written in Rust, right? So the reason we're able to do this for any language, whether it be PHP, Node, Ruby, or Python, is that it's it's simple Rust, right? Rust is uh, it's going to work on any platform. We cross compile to Amazon Linux or Debian, which pretty much covers all of our bases. You put it on the container and it's just going to do this stuff for you. And because most of these programming languages use lib, uh, libc's git environment we have a sweet little integration point that rust is able to hook into being the, the amazing little language it is so what now now can you show me the the docker file can you show me how you actually implement this because i'm still a little skeptical of what this might look like in in my environment yeah so let's start off here with the docker file so let's pretend that what we're looking at here is just your simple docker build process how you got there in this case it's just a simple node 18 bookworm uh, we're creating a little app directory to put our uh, express program in we copy the files over such as the node modules imagine a build step does all that and then we just have the good old-fashioned uh, command that we're executing which in this case is telling node uh, to run the application json and i could i could run that anywhere i can run that on my machine i can run that in kubernetes that all looks pretty standard yeah and the app uh, is that we saw before. It's just uh, sharing secrets for all the world to see. Uh, and then the magic here gets into, uh, you're gonna wanna build in a little bit of interoperability into your containers so that they are portable. So in this case, we're doing two things. Uh, first, we're installing Cryptea. You're gonna need that to work. So in this case, Cryptea and all the Lambda bits are going to sit in this op directory and they'll just pretty much be inert. So you can run this container on Kubernetes. It, it's not gonna look at the op directory unless you want it to. Uh, but it's just going to sit there in these op directories, which is a key directory for Lambda to look for resources and run these things we call extensions. Uh, and Cryptea is one of those things. It's an extension. Mm -hmm. The other one, won't go into detail about this. This one's called the Lambda Web Adapter. This basically makes it easy for a web process that's being spun up. In this case, um, the Express app is starting itself on port 8080. It's a very reverse proxy configuration, like perhaps in Kubernetes, you're probably putting maybe Nginx in front of this through some sidecar mechanism. So again, this will be pretty normal for most people. And Lambda actually makes that really easy as well with this new thing called the Lambda Web Adapter. Uh, and then we just tell the, the Lambda task group, that's a key part of Cryptea working that the directory is app. Right. So got a standard Docker file, you got a little bit of interoperability that sits inert on Kubernetes. And once you deploy that, I've got a, a SAM template here that's kind of a good example. But what we do is, uh, this is uh, your mileage may vary. You may use CDK. You may use one of many different ways. But the idea is you're going to tell Lambda not to build an image, to just use an image. And again, that image is going to be somewhere that you have on ECR, um, already exists there. And just you, you tell it, hey, I'm making a Lambda function. I want it to use this ECR image. And then you give it a couple of environment variables to tell Cryptea what to do. So when LD, uh, first you have to give it LD preload. This will pretty much ensure that the shared object file is booting before every process. Uh, once that happens, we try to find this nice way of this interface with Cryptea that says, okay, these are the secrets I need to get. And these are the environment variables that you should look for Cryptea secrets in. So this keeps um, this keeps things secure. So like... If you wanted to, it's basically a contract between you saying, hey, here's where my secrets are. And that's, uh, in this case, is an SSM path. And then by declaring these X Cryptea values for these environment variables, you're given permission to Cryptea when it's calling lib git environment that if it sees this value, it knows it could reach into the other shared memory space. Uh, so it's like a nice contract. Uh, so it just doesn't sort of control all of your environment variables and things like that. Yeah, that's really clever because Cryptea can see the environment as the, as the process is getting ready to boot and say, oh, mm -hmm. here's some things that I need to go fetch. And you have that, you know, where where does it exist in SSM and it, what are the values I'm looking for? So that's really slick. Yeah. You just fill those things out. And, and you said in Kubernetes, we don't need any of that, right? Like it's just it goes and fetches them for you um, because it's built yeah. in like you don't have the same shim layer that we need to put in that environment. Right. So this is all stuff that you just want to worry about when you're putting it on Lambda. This is the interoperability mode, if you will. It does not affect how the images run on Kubernetes. In fact, it just yeah. 
really all it cares about is what you were doing before and then just any sort of resources it may need when it runs on Lambda. So yeah, that's what really you're seeing. Yeah, thanks. And, and I think that's what we're seeing here. So like if we look at this, this is a uh, Lambda function URL, uh, which basically hooks up to the Lambda web adapter. And I think if, uh, let's see, so let's go and take a look at Lambda here. So here's the Cryptea demo in Lambda. It's a function. You can see here it's using this ECR image that was already pre-published to ECR. Uh, there's some fancy things that uh, Lambda allows you to do with uh, image configuration, but there is no entry point override, no command override, which means it's going to use the uh, whoops, it's going to use the command that's built into the Docker file, so we didn't have to override that. And then basically, no worker override. And we can even send, so if we looked here in the configuration for the environment variables, we can see here that these are the static values. So Lambda doesn't really see the secrets. It's basically, it sees the interface for Cryptea. Uh, all those secrets are being pulled for you dynamically from, uh, from SSM parameter store. And we can even test it here as well. So I could click on test and go to send it a little test event and get a little bit more extra logging here from CloudWatch, but you can see the response body right there. It's pulling the secrets back. Cool. Yeah, I, I mean, just really impressed with how you're able to do this at a process level where you can, it doesn't matter where you're running it. So two layers that you pull into the Lambda of one is the web adapter to run a standard web interface as a function. And the other one is the Cryptea LD preload that just fetches those secrets based on those environment variables. That's so cool. Thanks, yeah. I've, it's really sort of allowed our teams to take advantage of the Lambda's sort of scale to zero compute platform, right? And again, that's really good for event-driven jobs or sporadic workloads. It works great in high workloads as well. A lot of times Lambda can be uh, cheaper and easier to scale than Kubernetes. Uh, we have certainly found that out in certain situations, but you know, when you're exploring architectures, like say maybe active, active DR, right? And you're splitting your, your uh, traffic up between US East one and maybe US West two. And you need a way for all those resources to sort of scale down to zero a little bit better. That's where Lambda really shines. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So if anyone out there to... is mm -hmm. looking for a similar solution, they want to run a, a, a container in both Lambda and EKS, and you don't want to have to put your secrets in two places or bake them into the image, which you definitely shouldn't do, uh, check out Cryptea because that's really cool.